We're now just a few weeks away from the F1 2022 Wisner testing and the F1 store has released all new lines celebrating the 2022 Chinese New Year. First of all, we've also now got the 2022 McLaren fanware drop has finally been revealed. There's still different merch available from every team and now there's 20% off any lines on the store as well if you use the code currently on your screens. Click the links down below if you want to go check it out. It's race day for our young drivers here in the United Arab Emirates, where the Yas Marina circuit is about to play host to the Abu Dhabi Formula 2 race. Let's get started. Yas Marina circuit is a 3.4 mile racetrack built on the man-made Yas Island. In addition to the 21 corners, it features two very long straights. Now these will be the driver's main overtaking chances today, into turn eight and turn 11. I'm sitting here, quite emotional, next to my friend Davide Valsecchi. Here we are at the end of the F2 calendar, and the atmosphere is electric. I have no doubt that the drivers will be giving it everything they have out there today. I can't wait to get underway. Hey, Alex, you are absolutely right. It's a very special place. This is a track like no other, an event like no other, a jewel in the crown of Formula 2. It's perfect. I think we are in for a fantastic racing event here. And here are the driver grid positions for today's race. A fantastic effort from Felipe Dragovic yesterday puts him on pole position, with Robert Schwartzman alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sato, for sure, Daniel Tictum and Aitkin, Porcher, Armstrong, Vips, Liam Lawson, Deruvela, Fiscal, Escherus and Beckman, Lungard, Boschon, Zendeli, and Guillaume Samaya. Joe, the letter. Nisani and Oscar Piastri completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Well, here we are then for the final time in our F2 career mode. We are here back in Abu Dhabi. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video. Yet for the final time it's episode 24 of our Oscar Piastri road to Formula 1 and of course yeah if you missed out on the other two races that went live over the course of the weekend I would highly highly recommend going back and checking them out. Championship permutations though as you will have seen in the intro. Drivers championship Completely wrapped up. We've got a 32-point lead over Liam Lawson with just 27 points available. So, Oscar Piastri, we've done it. We have wrapped up the Drivers' Championship. Doesn't mean it's all over, though. Constructors-wise, high-tech, obviously Lawson and Yuri Vips, 13 points ahead of myself and Robert Schwartzman here. They're starting both on row 5. Schwartzman's right at the front of the field on the front row of the grid in P2. However, both races this weekend, he has absolutely sunk like a stone. So we've got to hope, you know, it's been an awful year from our teammate Robert Schwartzman. But if he can claw back good points in this final race, I think all will be forgiven. And let's just see if we can try and do the double then. Of course, we're starting at the back after issues in Friday's qualifying session. But fingers crossed today we can just keep it clean and tidy and take this Constructors' Championship. Five red lights, actually not a very long hold at all there. Kind of took me by surprise, but it is going to be lights out and away we go for the final time this year as we head down in towards Turn 1. Not really too sure which line to take there as they go three wide through the first corner. Guan Yu Zhou might be hung out to dry there as we're now going to try and muscle our way in up the inside of Zhou and Alessio delayed there as around the outside through turn three on the pair of them. So decent at the start and the end up two places. Let's try and make that three known, Asani. Oh, what's going on there? A lot of contact with Delader as he tried to get past me again. How, how on earth is that possibly our fault there? Delader crashed into the side of me and we get a warning for a collision there. But up the inside of Lungard and Asani there as they were caught too busy battling each other. We will therefore move up into P18 of the start of this race. But yeah, this one it's going to be a bit of a strategic one. Of course, yeah, the battle with high tech really, really heating up. It's sort of ebbed and flowed over the course of the year. But as we've been way more consistent late on in the year, we have been able to close up a lot of points on them once more. There is around the outside of the rim Zendeli, of course, retired from Friday's race. But back in the running on Saturday and Sunday. But he's going to now be down in P18 as we head down the back straightaway here. Zendeli, oh, and the leader. I'm going to look to the outside. 
We'll go very, very late on the brakes there down into the chicane. We just about keep it on the road. They're a little bit loose and ragged as we head through the final chicane. But we have looking like we might just about survive the opening lap of this race. There's 16 laps for this final feature race of the year. So we have certainly got plenty of time to try and move forward in this one. But yeah, we do definitely want to be trying to get into the points by the very end. I think we can see Yuri Vips and Jay Andruval are just up the road. So Vips has not had a good start then. At very best, he's still in P12 there. As Lawson, yeah, might still just be up inside the points. But Drogovic leads at the end of lap one. And far more importantly for us, Schwartzman is still in P2 there. So that's exactly what we want to see from our teammate. If he can walk away with 18 points from this, that could be the difference. We, however, need to try and close up to Fittipaldi and Guillaume Samaya there. As, yeah, there are a lot of battles right all up and down the field. As, actually, look at that, heading through turn three. Fittipaldi really struggling to roll on the power to the outside of the Shrews. Get it slowed down all over the curbing. Very, very difficult to do on F2 2021, but we will get the car stopped. And we will now claim P16 then early on, making good gains on the opening couple of laps. You know, we can take risks. We have got to be quick but careful, however, because I do not want to throw this away for the team. They've given us a fantastic car all year, and I want to repay them. Drogovic sets a 52-1 as we come towards the end of lap two. What are we going to do for reference? We are going to do a 52-6. So pace already looking pretty good then. Is DRS now enabled? Let's see if we can try and move past Samaya nice and quickly. Running on the power then out onto the back straight all over the back of Gilami Samai there is activating the DRS let's just see if we can try and get a run on the Brazilian here one last overtake for nostalgia as much as anything else Gilami to the inside we go gonna go late on the brakes there he really tried to squeeze me but good defensive play from Samaya not quite good enough though he did a really good job there forcing us so hard to the inside and then rotated back over to the outside of the corner, but we do still make the move work. And yeah, one more time in F2 2021, but hopefully, yeah, that'll be the last one. All over the back now of Raul Bosho. What a quiet campaign it's been from him over the course of this year as we try and head out onto the back straight. See if again we can try and get the DRS and get that a little bit closer to the Campos here. I guess the real question today is all about strategies. Look at that on the minimap. Big, big gap between Lawson. And the next car's up the road there, as I think that Boshong. is... Oh, not too sure who. Someone with issues here. Is it Boshong? Is it someone else? Oh, no, it's... Who is that, actually, on the inside? Oh, no! Don't say that's Drogovic out of the Grand Prix there. From the lead, the poor Brazilian. He's had such a strong end to the year there, but it all goes up in smoke, literally, in the final race of the season there. Drogovic from the lead. Hamilton 2009 style there. And he's out of the of, of the Abu Dhabi feature race. A heartbreaking end to the campaign for him. However, for us, it means Schwartzman now and here it's the lead of the race. There, as we've just pulled a move off on Ralph Bosham. So that could be critical in our championship. As, oh, David Beckman's gone round. I've just watched David Beckman loop it by himself as he tries to put on the throttle. What is going on early on in this final race of the year there? I mean, we've got Daruvula and Vips and Viscal now just in front as well but I mean end of lap four we're almost up to the points already just picking cars off and waiting for mistakes and issues look how slow Jay and Aruba is on the exit of turn three there I mean he's half throttle on the way out so we're gonna go to the inside of Jay and Aruba to try and catch him by surprise there an aggressive send not giving him any room on the exit of the corner there but just making it very very clear to Jay and no it might be his car next year but for now He's going to have to look at the back of it. As now we're all over the back of Yuri Vips here. We can see Lawson. He's not far at the road either. So I think Lawson has got mechanical issues here. Not what high tech need in the final race of the campaign. Maybe he's just lost a little bit of front wing. Or something. Anything like that. But it is all falling into our play at the moment for us. As now right behind Yuri Vips. Maybe about to take even more points out of high tech big lock up there from Yuri Vips he is struggling he is feeling the pressure at the moment and we absolutely love to see it there just able to take some slightly different lines we've got so much more grip over Vips at the moment look at that down in towards the penultimate corner you don't often see moves here as all Yuri Vips tries to slam the door there we get all over the curbs and you don't often see moves there and you won't see one now either as Yuri Vips yeah very very aggressively trying to defend let's see those we head back up through turn three they're a little bit offline 
on the way in, but it allows us to roll on the power super, super early. Vip's making it very clear. If we're going to make it, we've got to go around the outside, and looks like... Yep, cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Up until the points now, on just lap six of this race. Are we going to see Bent Viscal try and get a run on Liam Lawson? Are nice we work, maybe going to get close enough right. to try and look at making a move on the young Kiwi as well there, as Viscal is going to be gaining, gaining, gaining down the back straight at the moment. Lawson goes offensive on him. They're going to be side by side as they head down in towards the next couple of corners there, and Lawson backs out of the move much, much earlier than I was expecting. Luckily, no contact between all three of us there, and we all live to fight another day. But is Lawson now going to have the DRS on Bent Viscal? Yes, he is, but he's not really closing in there. Lawson has definitely got issues at the moment. The fact they're gaining in on him so quickly down the second part of the straight. And look how early Lawson is on the brakes there. Thank you very much. We'll have both high techs in a lap, and now we're up at the ninth place here. Exactly what we need, even if Schwartzman has issues now, we still need to try and fight our way further up the order. Because again, if, if he retires, we need to try and outscore them by 13 points by ourselves. But at the moment, it would be what? 27 points up against 1. As we've got more yellow flags, who's now got issues in this Grand Prix? Is it Liam Lawson? Is it someone else in this Grand Prix? Not too sure who it is at the moment. Maybe we'll get confirmation in the moment. No, it's Ralph Boschon out of the race. Again, like I said earlier on, a very, very quiet year from the Campos man, and it's going to go up in smoke. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the super songs. More issues. Jay Andruvula now out of the Grand Prix. What on earth is going on? It always seems to me when we get one with issues, it's always two. But, yeah, Mecha Chrome, I think I've got some answering to do, as now... Are we maybe going to be close enough to Bent Viscal? Probably not up this straight, but we might be able to set up a move down the second straight with it. There's five seconds the gap up to Marcus Armstrong at the road, so I think we're definitely going to have to pit slightly early and utilise the ultra soft tyres for a couple of extra laps. But Bent Viscal now, yeah, gap coming down rather rapidly. We might be able to gain a little bit more under braking there. Let's tip it in through the first part, roll it over the kerbs on the second and now yeah four tenths back from the trident we need to make the move work now i do not want to be stuck through the final sector looking at the back of the trident car there is bent viscal gonna go defensive to the outside super late on the brakes but i think yeah a bit too late that time round we'll let him have the position back and we'll have to go for it next time that was the fastest lap of the race keep this up Despite, yeah, having to give the place back to Bent Viscal, we still set fastest lap there. Oh, big wobble at Turn 1. That's going to put us a little bit further back from the Trident than I'd want. What is going on with the car at the moment? Come on, keep it in check, Matt. Don't want to throw it all away early on. Halfway through this final race of the year is now, yeah, the gap to Bent Viscal going to be about what it was a lap ago. So it might be close again down the second straight. Problem is, we've done no running on the Ultra Softs all weekend, with the exception of qualifying so we've really got no idea what the tire life is going to be like on them but i'm so tempted to pit now i think we're gonna have to go one lap longer at the very least can't do half a race on those tires but we're still just stuck behind bent viscal at the moment we need to make the move push now we're boxing this lap there we go, team do want us in at the end of lap 9, however I've already requested an early stop. So yeah, that is must be about as early as they think we can sensibly go. This time round, surely now, we're going to be able to get the run on Bent Viscal here. Gaining, gaining, gaining on the Trident as we head down the back straightaway. He's going to go a little bit defensive to the outside. Pretty even on the brakes there. Oh, Viscal might just outbreak himself slightly. Gets it slowed down rather nicely there. We're going to roll on the power really early on the exit of the corner. Before we even got to the DRS, we've got the momentum here. And I think Viscal knows it. Not even going to push us too defensive as we head down the second straightaway. We'll get back over to the racing line. Trying to lock up at the rears, but we get it slowed down. Coming out up into eighth place then. Boxing in the end of this lap. Hopefully it's going to eat away at some of the five second deficit to the cars up the road. Rounding the final couple of corners, though, as we get ready to box in in this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Just about keep it between the white lines on the way in. Been a while since we've done Abu Dhabi's pit lane on F1 2021. Make sure we get it slowed down nice and tidy. There is the beautiful Aston Martin uh, there in the pit lane. But, yeah, team all ready to go. We are going to be the first car into the pits. It worked well in Jeddah. 
Will it work well here? Is it going to be a 5.7 second stop? Go, go now. Yes, it is. I mean, we botched it on the exit. But we're going to have a bit of clear air as well in front of us, which is exactly what we need. But we have to navigate our way out of the pit lane nice and tidily as well. There is, yeah, we've now got to try and gain six seconds on the cars in front. Seven laps on these tyres, though, is going to be quite a push, I would imagine. But we've got to utilise all the grip and then try to hang on with the cars in front. Let's get it. There we go, purple through the final sector. I mean, we're taking good, good chunks of time out of the cars in front. These tyres, ooh, we're in a little bit wide out of turn one. These tyres are giving us what we need. Robert is coming in for his stop. There we go, first cars into the pit lane. There is a purple through sector one, purple through sector two. Is this about to be another fastest lap of the day? And I mean, even those points could be really beneficial here just to try and make sure we've got the gap over high tech. Lawson, though, and Yuri Vips have both really struggled all day long. And I think Lawson has just been going backwards here. But I mean, yeah, these tyres are so much better than the rubber we were on early on in the race. Bit of a wobble through the final corner, but down towards the line. Look at that, a 149.9. These are mega! In comparison to those super soft tyres there. Is, sorry, against the soft tyres here. Is, look at that, heading back out of the pit lane. Poor Chair and Aitken. Only a couple of seconds up the road now. Of course, we're not going to have the same sort of advantage we once did, but we've gained so much time over Bent Viscallon. Of course, we've got these tyres up to temperature as well, which is only going to help us even more. Trying in the final corners then onto lap 13. Pretty much every other car then into the pit lane. So where are we going to re-emerge in this race? And far more importantly, is Schwartzman still in the lead? I think we should be close now to Armstrong. I was actually talking of which. There he is coming out of the pit lane. So I think we have jumped Marcus Armstrong then in this race. And it looks like all those drivers that have done an extra lap have really fallen back at the moment. It's now only less than two seconds. That's just not quite true, Jeff. But yeah, Tictum now car up in front there as we're now into seventh place of the race but yeah Schwartzman still leads the way at the moment but he's not far ahead of Marina Sato in P2 and there's a big big gaggle of cars that we're trying to latch onto the back of trying so desperately to get back within the DS range of Dan Tictum here but of course yeah not quite getting it means the AI just gains so much down the straightways there what we really need really is a couple of these guys to start battling and really sort of Constantine her up as now Marcus Armstrong is starting to apply more pressure to us. Is he now going to be able to get a run to the outside? Yes, he most definitely is there. Armstrong to the outside in his dams. But yeah, definitely not brave enough to go for it there. So, oh, look at the understeer. We're now starting to get perhaps going on these tyres. Might have been a bit too aggressive there as Armstrong tried to stick the nose up the inside. And we definitely told him no that time. Two laps to go though. Here from Yas Marina. We think now it's more a case of trying to hang on. Yes, these tyres are definitely starting to struggle. I think again Armstrong is going to be trying to apply the pressure though. As we round around lap 15 of 16 here. Armstrong gaining, gaining, gaining once more. And all we can do is look over the carbon fibre and Alpine logos there as that dams gets bigger and bigger. Oh, I think we broke a little bit too late again. Locking up the rears there. It's really easy to do for some reason around Abu Dhabi. We try and give Armstrong the room, but I think he just backed out of it at the very last moment there. And yeah, we're losing so much ground to the guys in front. This last lap is just going to have to be defence, defence, defence here from Marcus Armstrong. It's been such a brilliant campaign. Can we get one final good battle in and hopefully yeah, finish the season? Not quite with the bang I was hoping for. You know, pre-weekend I was trying to eye up a couple more podiums, but that's often the way F2 Championship deciders go. Sometimes it's just about doing what you need to rather than risking a whole lot more. As do not do what we did on Friday's sprint race. There, big, big correction as we round at the final sector then. About to start the last lap of this series here on F1 2021. Tire warning lights come on. So definitely you've got a bit too aggressive on those tires there. But we took a gamble and to be fair so far... It's put us ahead of Bent Viscal and Marcus Armstrong, which we might not have done without doing it. But one this more lap to go final lap of, the race. of the Oscar Piastri F2 career mode. Like I said, what a season it's been. If you've watched all of this and yet still haven't given these F2 cars a go on F1 2021, I don't know what more 
I could do to try and recommend these things to you guys. They are an absolute just ball to drive. So much fun. So, so different to the F1 cars and a much more raw driving experience as well. They keep you on your toes. Sometimes they're being a bit unpredictable, exactly like that. As Armstrong might have an open invitation there. We'll do the up and under on him though. It is going to be a drag race as we head down the back straightaway. Of course, he's going to have the DRS though, so we're just going to see the dams start to sneak in front once more. We'll duck back into the slipstream though of Marcus Armstrong. And are we going to be close enough to go for a send? He's going to go defensive. And these tyres, yeah, really, really are struggling here. We need to try and put the power down, get a good run out onto this second back straightaway here. But Schwartzman looks like he's just about doing enough at the front there. Sato trying to hang on. We're going to have a look back to the outside though of Marcus Armstrong here. Are we going to be able to get the car slowed down? Armstrong keeps the nose there side by side in towards the final chicane of the race. And Armstrong, nothing he can do in that situation. Has to back out of it. And it looks like as we round the final few corners then of this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, as long as we don't do anything stupid, it should be P7 there. But what a year it's been. I said about the halfway stage, you know, we were definitely in the championship driver's battle. But constructors, I think we were pretty much out of it. But Schwartzman, he hasn't exactly come on strong, but he's come on so much better in the second half of the year. He's going to finish it off with a win. That should mean we've done enough to beat high tech overall in the championship. We run horribly wide, though, in towards the final corner. And I think Armstrong has had us. It's only P8, but it's good enough for the double. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. A great win then for the Prima team today. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? I think they kept a cool head. That's why they won today. Smooth, steady, everything bad that happened to them, they handled it calmly and professionally. That's what let them focus on getting the best out of everything else. The car, the strategy, they managed to keep out of trouble the whole way around. It looks like it's time for the victory ceremony once again, as I can see the drivers beginning to make their way out for the celebrations. You can see it on their faces. It's another marvellous team win for Prema today. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Challenge. So then, after today's event, Prema have claimed the team's championship. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Well, if you wanted to watch the next race, I think you're going to be waiting quite a while here because that is a wrap on the F2 career mode here from F1 2021. Like I said, obviously I've done one of these on F1 2019 and F1 2020. This one, I'd argue, has been the best one of them all. So many great battles throughout the entirety of this year. And as always, I cannot thank you guys enough for the insane continued support on F1 2021. You know, we're not far away from the real 2022 season starting. And yeah, I'm so looking forward to bringing you guys more content. But it is Robert Schwartzman who finally walks on top of the podium at the end of the year there to take a crucial victory for Prema and himself. Sato in P2 ahead of Jack Aitken, who gets another podium on the board there. Richard Vashaw, Teo Porcher, Dan Tictum, Armstrong, myself, Viscal, and Yuri Vips rounds out your top 10 there. So 31 points to high techs one there means, yeah, we have certainly taken the Constructors' Championship as well. You can see further down the order, Samaya ahead of Zendeli, Fittipaldi, Alessio, Deleda, Christian Lungard, Liam Lawson down in 16th. So, yeah, he definitely had issues in that Grand Prix there. Roy Nassani, Guan Yu Zhou, and then Drogovic with his issues, and David Beckman having a spin as well there, finishing right at the rear of the field. And, yeah, just a Ruvula and a Ralph Boschung that didn't make it to the flag there. We do come out on top though, 42 points clear of Liam Lawson come the end of the year there. So after all is said and done from this weekend, let's have a quick look at the weekend results there. Uh, yeah, we came through in 12th at the end of that one, but we still only lost three points, uh, sorry, five points even to Liam Lawson. Sato actually ended up doing best of the weekend there. So 
make of that what you will uh, to finish off the year there. Like I said, Schwartzman P2 ahead of Porsche and Vashore. Jack Aitken and Dan Tictum all with 20 points apiece. And yeah, championship-wise though, 214 points for us. Uh, 172 for Liam Lawson there, 42 points clear as he finishes 15 ahead of Enzo Fittipaldi there. Porsche, an incredibly strong debut campaign from him. Just another 15 behind Enzo Fittipaldi there ahead of David Beckman in P5. Richard for sure in sick ahead of the rims and Deddy there. He took ahead of him right at the checkered flag there. Yeah, their teammate battle went right down to the Y. Yuri Vips down in 8th ahead of Sato and Jack Aitken who managed to sneak inside the top 10 there. That strong result for Schwartzman bumps him all the way up into 12th place there just behind Bent Viscal on 76 points there. Drogovic, Daruvala and Tantictum all didn't score points in the final race of the year so it is Drogovic that takes that one on count back after his win at the Italian Grand Prix. There's 66 points for all of those guys ahead of Armstrong on 63. Lungard on 62. Disappointing years, I'm sure, from those two drivers there. Clear of Alessio Deleda on 47. Samaya with at 21. And yeah, Guan Yu Zhou, 18 points down in 20th place at the end of the year. Only beating out Roy Nassani and at Ralph Boschung, who neither scored points at any point this year there. Teams-wise, we do take it 17 points in the end. It really did go down to the wire, but happy we could do the double once more here on F1 2021. High-tech, yeah, 17 back. Still a long way ahead of ART there, who do just, only just, stay ahead of MP Motorsport come the end of the year there. Three points between them as they round out the podium there. Sharus did end up in fifth place there, but only 10 points ahead of Trident. If only Bent Viscan had had a stronger final race, maybe that could have made the difference there. Carlin down in seventh. Uh, they jumped race lab right at the very end of the year there and just hung on ahead of Campos, UNI Virtuosi, and Dams in last place there with 63 points. But yeah, there we go then. The end of our Oscar Piastri career mode. Like I said, not 100% sure whether we're going to do a season with the Alpine in F1. Of course, we got the My Team career mode. That is firing on all cylinders at the moment. We've only got a handful of races left of Season 5. And we've got a big, big championship battle that we need to focus on against Max Verstappen there. Of course, we're also trying to resurrect Williams from the ashes as well. You know, we're starting to pick up some solid results in that series as well. So, not quite sure, you know, with F1 2022 mod career mode probably coming around uh, by the end of next month as well. Not too sure how sort of an odd season in an Alpine will fit in with all of that. But thank you all so much once again, though. This season has been so much fun to do over the last eight weeks. Very, very intense. I'll give it that. But three races a weekend. I never thought this series would maintain the same sort of momentum as it has there. But you guys have been brilliant. Make sure if you're not already, you get yourself subscribed for daily Formula 1 content. And yeah, we'll be back next year. Probably, I think I've already decided it might end up being a Dennis Hauger series, but we'll wait and see. Thank you all, and we'll see you very, very soon. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members, so a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below, and yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.